go to. All right, let's go to uh, Republican Senator Jeff Flake, the man we've been talking about of Arizona right now. You know, Jeff, um, you were uh, the Tea Party before the Tea Party. Uh, I was in 95 uh, also uh, with a group of people that were the Tea Party before the Tea Party came into existence. How bizarre is it that in 2017, a guy like you that was loathed by leadership because you were such a pain in the ass when it came to small government, now suddenly you're a part of Washington, you're a part of the establishment, you are not sufficiently conservative. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure when that transformation happened, but, uh, but all of a sudden, yeah, I, I'm a, a rhino, a Republican in name only. And uh, so uh, uh, politics have changed quite a bit. That's all I can say. Sarah Huckabee Sanders couldn't name a single vote uh, that you took that would make you insufficiently conservative. Uh, your rating is 96 percent. Um, Tell me, when did the breakdown between the White House and you uh, start in earnest? Well, during the campaign, when the president, uh, the first statement he made when he uh, when he ran, or one of the first ones, was uh, talking about Mexican migrants uh, as being rapists, and then went on to talk about John McCain, how he couldn't be respected, uh, um, and, uh, and I, I spoke out then, and then the judge, uh, born in Indiana with Mexican heritage uh, that he couldn't judge fairly because of that heritage. Uh, those things I, I spoke out on and, and I keep asking myself and uh, those who don't like it, at, at which point should I not have spoken out? Uh, so I, I didn't get off on the right foot, I guess, with the administration uh, back in the campaign. But uh, that's completely different from policy. Uh, the, the problem is it seems now to be conservative, you, you have to be angry and uh, it, it's a different different type of politics than we're used to you and you and me senator flake it's willie geis good to see you this morning even among the many people who applauded your speech yesterday there are those who said well why is he leaving then if he feels this way we need him in the fight talk a little bit if you could about the consideration not to seek re-election because there are many right. people who wish you'd stay there and push back against president trump from washington and not from the outside well, the bottom line is if I were to run a campaign that I could be proud of and where I didn't uh, have to cozy up to, uh, to the president and his positions uh, or his behavior, uh, I could not win in a Republican primary. That's the bottom line. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's not that uh, you have to just be with the president on policy. Uh, you can't uh, question his behavior and still be a Republican in good standing, apparently, uh, in, in a Republican primary. And so. Uh, you know, it, 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 in poll after poll, you'll see that the uh, majority of Republican primary voters, that's kind of a subset of a, of a subset, uh, are firmly behind the president's policies. But not just that, if you ask some of them, or you ask them as a whole what their most important uh, policy item is, it's are you standing with the president? And uh, they take any criticism of the president as. Uh, somehow something that's not conservative and that's what's got to change it really does and i hope to be able to in the next 14 months uh, speak out continually i hope my colleagues uh, do as well because we're entering a time where uh, we're normalizing behavior we shouldn't normalize and uh, it's, it's just not going to be good for the country. Do you think, Senator, that's unique to Arizona? I mean, what you said no, just there is not. extraordinary, mm -hmm. that you can't just go out and be who you are, be a principled conservative, offer your ideas on policy and say, but I disagree with President Trump on A, B, and C. It's right. not good enough to just be a principled conservative anymore? I think it may be more pronounced uh, in Arizona than some other states, but, uh, but it's not unique. Uh, I think some of my colleagues are finding the same. Uh, if you had asked them in their, their polling and, and their experiences anecdotally as well. Uh, so then it's, it's, it's really changed uh, over the last uh, couple of years, the type of politics that we are expected to engage in. And uh, yeah. I, I just I'm think not it's, even, it's not healthy. <clears throat> not even sure we'd call it politics. Uh, as Senator, yeah. you say we're normalizing behavior we shouldn't be normalizing. Um, last week we had. Another uh, fellow senator on, Bill Cassidy, who we're talking about health care, and I, I couldn't get a straight answer out of him, so I just asked him, has the president ever lied? And he said that the president doesn't lie, but the president speaks in hyperbole. Is that what you mean by normalizing behavior that we shouldn't be normalizing? 
Yeah, I, I think so. I, I said <laughs> in the speech last night that, uh, you know, we, we are excusing undignified and outrageous and reckless uh, speech and behavior uh, as telling it like it is. Uh, you know, the president's not politically correct. Uh, that, that's not that's not right. I, I think we ought to say this is speech that is reckless and it's undignified. And, and until we do, uh, we we are complicit in normalizing that kind yep. of behavior. Yep. Senator, yesterday you said, uh, why didn't you do something? Why didn't you speak up in reference to this point in time politically? Uh, your colleagues, uh, it's very rare to hear any of your colleagues, other than Senator Corker this week, Senator McCain, uh, speak up. Uh, is it fear? Is it cowardice? Is it ambition? Do you know what it is? Why so silent among the Republican majority in the Senate? Well, a lot of it. Uh, <laughs> there was a joke that Paul Ryan made in the, the uh, speech, I think, at the, uh, the dinner uh, last week, that he has to wake up and uh, and see, read the tweets and see which ones that he has to deny he, 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 he saw. And uh, there is some fatigue about it as well. There's just so much coming out, you can't respond to everything. And I understand that. Uh, but on the whole, uh, we can't continue to, to just remain silent uh, when the president keeps going on like this. There is a fatigue about it. There really is. There's just so much and you can't respond to everything. Uh, but uh, on the important things, we need to stand up. Casey. Senator Flake, Casey Hunt, nice to see you this morning. Hi. There are many people who are supportive of you that I have heard from, but who also have something of a critical question or statement. They're saying actions speak louder than words. What do you do now to actually make a change in the leadership? What do you do behind the scenes in the Senate? Uh, what can you do in politics going forward? Well, certainly if the president carries forward, forward on some of the, the threats that he's made, for example, on the First Amendment to go after uh, uh, you know, news organizations, pull their license if he doesn't like the news that they're providing. Uh, if there are things on the policy front, boy, we'd better stand up on that, and I'm confident that we will. Uh, it's more on, on the normalizing the behavior side that I think that uh, that, that we've fallen down on as a whole. And so I hope that we speak out and just say, this is undignified. This is beneath the office of the president. Uh, we've got to stand up. And uh, what Bob Corker has been uh, concerned about is uh, you know, our foreign policy. Uh, we've got to have a foreign policy that's predictable and sober and consistent, uh, particularly at this time uh, with North Korea and the situations we're facing worldwide, these things matter. They matter a great deal. And, and that's why Bob is so concerned, and I share these concerns. Senator Jeff Flake, thank you for being on the show this morning. Thanks thank, for having me. Thank you so much. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.